no, I gave it to him because my doctor told me that I was giving him something that was totally benign. That's antifreeze. Okay. Hello friends. Welcome back to today's video. It's a little bit different than the content that I promised you, but it is so important. I had to make this video. I hope I don't get emotional. I haven't gotten emotional about this in a way where I cried. I got more emotional about this in a way where I was angry. Everybody in the world deserves to know this so they can make their own decision. It was so unfair. Not only myself, but I put my faith in in the doctor's hands, the pediatrician's hands, and my son's health was completely at risk. Could have given him the worst of the worst of the worst issues, diseases, problems because of this. And I would just love if you liked and shared this video because this is a message that needs to get out to moms everywhere. It's so scary, you guys. So when Christian was six months old, five or six months old is when he started solids. And I started him on baby cereal and then avocado. That's how I was advised to do it. From the minute he started solids, my poor baby's stomach was constipated. He was so bound up. So I thought it was from the iron in the baby cereal, even though I got like the cleanest of the cleanest brands, at least that's what I was told. It still bothered his stomach. So I switched him off that. I got him on regular oatmeal. I mean like grown up oatmeal that was gluten-free it was organic it was expensive but i splurge on him because his health and wellness is my main priority that didn't work i tried to take him off of that to put him on just fruits and vegetables that didn't work then the formula shortage happened and i got him formula from europe as soon as i got him on that formula his constipation got worse. So I took him to the doctor and the doctor suggested putting him on this. I'm gonna be really careful about the wording I use because this video needs to go out there and YouTube is very strict about their guidelines and pharmaceutical companies are very crazy about keeping their pharmaceuticals going and it's crazy, so follow me. It was recommended that my baby be put on this miracle laxative. If you know, you know. And if you don't know, you'll figure it out. I put him on this miracle laxative. Within a day or two, issues were gone. He was going so nice and regularly, full diapers, even blowouts. Sorry, TMI, moms talk about poop. But this is very serious, you guys. This is so, so, so serious for adults, but also for babies. Within maybe a week or so, I noticed he started having this weird, what Adam called a neurological response to something. The first time I noticed it, he had just started crawling and he was playing by the cabinet and his arms went up and he got stuck in a smile and he's like, and I was like, oh, you're excited about something. I, I genuinely thought he was excited about something. But after two or three times of this weird response, Adam and I both agreed it didn't seem right. At his next pediatrician appointment, I think it was his six month appointment, I explained to the doctor, like this is what's happening and the doctor had no idea. I said, the only way I could describe it would be like a tick. And he said, I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you're talking about because I can't see it. Like it's, you can't make him do it in the moment when you're at the doctor. He said, but now in this day and age, like we all have cameras, just take a video of it when it happens and then I'll evaluate it. So I said, okay. And something in my gut, like Adam and I are talking back and forth, We're like trying to figure out what could this be from? Am I drinking too much coffee? I stopped because I was still breastfeeding at the time. I actually am still breastfeeding now, but is it the coffee intake? It wasn't because I stopped coffee. Is it something I'm eating? It wasn't. And then I'm like, you know what? I started this miracle laxative. His stomach's fine now. Let me take him off. Could possibly be it. It's the only other thing we changed. Let's stop it. I stopped it. The tick things went away. I kind of correlated it, but I was like, I don't know. Maybe that's just how their nervous system develops. Different milestones at different months. He's my first, right? I don't know if that's like normal for his nervous system to develop that way. His constipation just continued to get worse. His one year appointment was when we were given the green light to go from formula to whole milk. And the doctor even said, if you don't want to do dairy, which I was on the fence, I would say oat milk. Fortified oat milk is the closest thing, the next best thing. Whatever you do, don't use soy is what he told me. I said, and he said almond milk is kind of too thin. It doesn't have the fats in there. And my baby isn't the best eater, probably because he's never hungry because he's always stopped up. Adam and I discussed it and it was really hard to find a really clean oat milk that doesn't have any gums or fillers. Even the organic ones have a lot of fillers and gums, which I looked up, it's kind of not good for their gut. So we decided we would go with organic 
grass-fed, if we could find grass-fed, whole milk. When he started the dairy is when the constipation just got worse. To the point where I called the pediatrician because I'm like, I don't know what to do for this kid because it got to the point where he would push and nothing would come out. So they recommended using the Windy, which is an air enema. Usually when you insert the Windy is when it makes a whistle. That's how you know it's in enough. He's like, have a diaper underneath him. It could open the floodgates. I didn't even get the whistle. I've tried it so many times. It just didn't work for him. Called the pediatrician again. They told me to use Pedialax, which is a glycerin suppository. Tried that. It worked the first time. So now we had this cycle where I'd clean him out with the suppository or the miracle laxative. I think I said the name of it already. I'll just bleep it. Be okay for a few days and then it would start backing up and backing up and backing up and then it would get to the point where he would push and push and push and it was scary. His whole face would turn red. He literally looks like a different child. He would turn red, he would push and nothing would come out. So that would happen and then I knew it was time to give him Pedialax. After I think two times on the third try, the Pedialax, all it did was give him the urge to push, but I've never seen this happen before, especially with an enema. It didn't soften it. So he would scream out in pain, he would cry. It broke my heart, it broke Adam's heart. Whole body turned red. I'm like, is he gonna give himself some sort of, I don't know, is something gonna pop? Like it got so scary. So we made an appointment specific for the constipation with the doctor. And he was kind of like, it's very normal in kids. I come to find out now, one in five children is chronically constipated. They don't like to drink water. Like it's just children. He recommended staying on the miracle laxative and I had forgotten. So he said, just keep him on that miracle laxative. His words out of his mouth, don't worry. Cause I'm like, can I just keep him on that? That seems a little bit, a lot. I try to do things naturally, but on the other hand, this breaks my heart. I need to fix this for my poor baby. He's suffering. He goes, it's totally benign. It's not even absorbed into the bloodstream. So many doctors say that that's what they think. Got in the car. I'm like, oh my God, I love this guy. I love that he told us there was nothing wrong with it. Love that he said it's not absorbed into the bloodstream. You know how I am with medicine. Game on. This is good. Started giving the baby the miracle laxative every day. I guess it has to accumulate in, in his body. Now, mind you, let me just start by saying this. Start 20 minutes later. This is my experience, and this is based off of my research. I am not a medical professional in any way. I am just a mom with a baby who I could have potentially given serious problems, and we'll talk about the issues yeah. that have been uncovered or related to this medication being given to children, recommended by doctors, given to children long-term, and Wow, but this is my experience. It's what I found online. Do your own research. This is nothing but me sharing my story and my own personal experience. Just trying to put it out there because YouTube is crazy. So are pharmaceutical companies. Put it in every bottle and I guess in my baby, it has to accumulate in his system after about a week and a half. And I would alter the amount that I was giving him because he told me I could give a whole cap full, but I was giving about a teaspoonful, sometimes a half. Then if he ate something like a banana or a baby rice teether cracker, I would give him a little bit more because those are binding ingredients that in his, they bind his stomach. So after about two weeks of giving it every day, but different doses, never more than a teaspoon, even though he, I was could give a cap, we started noticing these ticks again, but these ticks got worse. They looked like, not like seizures, but he was seizing. It was a, it was a tick slash seize. Looking it up now, it was motor ticks, petrifying. It just so happened Adam's mom was visiting the week that the ticks came back. When Adam's mom's here and we go in the car, I'll give her the front seat and I'll sit in the back with the baby. So I'm in the back watching him in his car seat and maybe in a 10 minute drive, we had about six of these ticks and it wasn't, just like this anymore, which does happen. It was jaw jutting out like this, full body, hands, legs. And then at one point he was, what scared me the most, he was in his high chair. It almost looked like he was straining to get out, but he did the tick and then he kind of like stared in space for a second and then he was confused for a second and he came through. It was very fast, but I do know in baby seizures, they could just have like those blank, kind of like, um, what do you call them, silent seizure type of thing. And I'm like, <laughs> WTF. So I was telling Adam's mom about it and I'm like, it's gotta be this miracle laxative. It has to be. Like, you know when you just know. And plus, hello, mother's intuition 
is a real thing. So she's like, did you Google it? And I was like, yeah, I did. And it, nothing, there was nothing there. Like it's totally benign is what every doctor is saying. And it's not absorbed into the bloodstream, just like my doctor said. And she goes, have you tried to Google it from a scientific perspective? Have you tried to Google and search for a scientific paper? I'm like, no, but I'll try anything at this point. My baby's having tics and potentially seizures. Thank God she was here. Thank God we had this conversation and thank God I searched that because the first thing I found was a study, oh, the emotion. It was being done at CHOP, Children's Hospital of Pennsylvania or Pittsburgh. I don't know, it's in Pennsylvania though. A very, very, very world renowned hospital. One of the world's top children's hospitals, right? FDA was funding this study on this miracle laxative. You guys can figure it out. If you know, you know, and if you don't, it'll be easy to figure out. They were finding these negative findings that we'll get into in a second, but they ran out of money within like a year or two. The study just ended, but they know that it's bad. But doctors are still saying it's benign. Doctors are still saying it's not absorbed into the bloodstream and you can have your kid on it long term. Now, the way that it's prescribed and written on the medication itself, it says that it is not to be given to children under 17 years old and it's not to be used for more than seven days in a row. Tell me why my doctor and all these doctors and all these other children are being put on it for years at a time. In fact, my doctor said, oh, there's autistic kids that they'll only eat chicken nuggets. So they're on it every day, their whole entire life. It just helps keep them regular. So now I'm studying the scientific part of it. I see this research, I'm getting pissed. I start finding parents that are writing in online. I start finding these news videos on YouTube. I can't even, oh my God. So here are some of the symptoms that have been logged that the FDA has been made aware of, but we're still prescribing this for children. Common side effects of this drug include rage, OCD, ADD, aggression, tics, seizures, panic attacks, speech issues, kidney issues, autism-like behaviors, ODD, night terrors, numbness, acidosis, dysbiosis, which I'll put it across the screen. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it sounds bad. Learning delays, mouth sores, lack of growth, hallucinations, homicidal and suicidal ideation. I saw this and I saw red. I'm continuing to do my research and I find these two news videos that are petrifying. This woman had this sweet little girl that she said she watched change overnight when this doctor put her on this miracle laxative. I forgot this part. The active ingredient is polythylene glycol, also known as PEG 3350. The main ingredient in that miracle drug, PEG 3350, is also the main ingredient in, wait for it, antifreeze. We're putting the ingredient in antifreeze in our babies, in our bodies. Also approved for pregnancy. I used this when I was pregnant per my doctor's advice. That chemical is being ingested. It is stripping the lining of the gut and it's causing all of these crazy potential problems like in my son, ticks, a potential seizure. I don't know if that was a seizure. And I could have potentially given my kid Tourette's syndrome like the man that I found online who started the uproar about this. Child had Tourette's, perfectly normal child, developed Tourette's, aggression. There's children with autism that were fine before this. And these are all alleged. It's what I found online. Do your own research. But I am telling you from my own personal experience, the tics and that potential seizure were there. And they got worse and they got more and more and more the longer I had my child on this miracle laxative that I was told by my doctor was totally benign. It wouldn't be absorbed into his tiny little bloodstream. Go back. This woman had a perfectly normal daughter who after being on this for a couple of days, I wanna say she said a week or two, started developing rage, anger issues, and also this OCD where she would sniff her hands like this. She said it happened at minimum 50 times a day. Piecing things together like I did, she took her daughter off the miracle laxative. She's like, it's the only thing that changed. Within two days, the aggressions, the new behaviors, and specifically the OCD with smelling the hands was gone disappeared, which is great until I tell you what the doctor said, but we'll get there in a second. The second and worst one that I heard of, remember going back to suicidal and homicidal ideations, this little boy, not little boy, preteen boy, 13, 14 years old, was having issues with his stomach, 
doctor put him on this miracle laxative. He was told he could be on it, it was fine. Child starts becoming depressed, very angry, having outbursts, issues, hallucinations, not sleeping. His mother said she watched him go into a drug-induced psychosis and the drug was this miracle laxative. So they're trying to tell the doctor, the doctor's like, it's not that, it's fine, keep him on it. Winds up an outburst in one of these moments of rage, his father to the child is serving 20 years in a juvenile facility and when taken off the miracle laxative went totally back to his normal even keeled self so when the doctors are being told this in this one news broadcast that i watched it wasn't this child's doctor it was just a random doctor an expert they were interviewing about this and he goes well the gut and the brain connection is so close which i i'm tracking right i get that completely what I don't get is what he said. Well, in children that have issues with mental health, like somebody who's going to have rage issues, OCD, ADHD, autism, those kinds of things, they're more predisposed to being constipated. So basically, they would have had these behaviors anyway. It's just that they happen to also have constipation because the brain and the gut are so closely related that kids that are, have all those mental health issues also have constipation. You mean to tell me that you're trying to pitch that load of sh to us, pardon the pun, totally intended, because when these kids come off of this miracle laxative that you're pushing, because why, are you getting a kickback from, from the company? You mean to tell me that, that that's how you're piecing this all together when there are hundreds of thousands of kids that are put on this all the time and I almost gave my son Tourette's? Are you kidding me? All of these kids, as soon as they came off, including my own, within two days, symptoms were gone. But it's because they were predisposed to this anyway. One in five children is constipated. I can't tell you how many are on this. The whole point is we're fixing this. I'm fixing this with another route. If you guys would like to know how I'm fixing this, based off the research I did, I am no expert. I'm still in the process of doing it. Absolutely threw that bottle of miracle laxative away. He will never take that. I will never take that again. Even if I ever get pregnant again, which I'm not. People ask me all the time. I'm not there yet anytime soon ever. I don't know, but I will find out a different way to heal my body if I get that first trimester, third trimester issue with my stomach. Not happening. You do your own research. Trust your mama gut. Trust your intuition and question your doctors. This is absolutely heartbreaking. It is absolutely infuriating. And I am so grateful to my mother-in-law just to make that suggestion. Or I would have honestly thought that I just had a son that had that problem. And you know what the problem would be? People would say, oh, because you were over 40 and you had a baby. You should have never had a baby at 40 years old. Look what happened. You had a baby with Tourette's. No, I gave it to him because my doctor told me that I was giving him something that was totally benign. That's antifreeze. Okay, I'm done. Rant over. Please, if something doesn't seem right or feel right to you as a mom, as an aunt, as a grandmother, as a dad, grandfather, do your research, figure it out. Don't just take doctors or anybody's words for it. There's a link if you need to report your child's symptoms to the FDA to beg them to continue this study that they ran out of money, money that was being done at CHOP. If you have issues with this, if you guys want a private message, me on Instagram at row underscore Clausen. I will tell you the name of the miracle laxative if you haven't figured it out by now. We should have made this like a game. Do some sort of, I don't know, shot of probiotic because you need it now. Every time I say miracle laxative, but if you need my help, if you need that link, if I'm allowed to, I'm just so petrified to get any kind of backlash or this video taken down. So if you need any of that, the link, I'll try to put it in the description box. If not, if you or your child were on this miracle laxative, hit me up in DM on Instagram. Make sure you say it's about the miracle laxative video. I'm gonna go back to doing, I don't know, true crime, fashion, prison wife, new mom, everything, all the things. We are gonna figure it out together. You guys loved the true crime one. I love making it, so we might go back there. I don't know. Love you guys so much. Oh, if you made it this far, clearly we caught a vibe. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a video and we'll go from there. I love you guys so very much. This might be the most important video I've made of all time. Yeah. See you in the next one. Come say goodbye. Say bye friends. Say bye bye friends.